You finish building your dream PC. You go to turn it on and nothing happens. No, God, please, no. You wait a little bit. Maybe it's just taking a while to boot up, who knows? And yet nothing happens. The screen stays blank. It's an occurrence that happens a lot to new builders, especially, but can happen to any of us. It happened to me in my last build. There's a myriad of things that can go right, and there's even an equally myriad of things that can go wrong when it comes to building a PC. Today, I'm going to go over some hardware troubleshooting tips that might help you get your machine that you spent so much money and time on to work. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. In today's video, I'm going to go over some basic troubleshooting tips to help you get that new PC build you just put together into post and hopefully then into a Windows installation screen. We're going to move from the outside in and we're gonna start with the most obvious thing, which is- Have you tried turning it off and on again? If turning it off and on again didn't help, the next thing we can do is make sure everything that's a plug is fully seated and plugged in. And we're gonna, again, start from the outside and move our way in. So let me rejigger the camera and I'm going to focus it on this build right here. So the first things we're gonna do, as I mentioned already, is we're gonna work ourselves from the outside inward. And the first thing you wanna do is check your plugs. It's the easiest thing to do, the less, least invasive so really it's worth a shot doing. First thing you want to do is make sure that your power supply, which you probably cannot, oh no, you can see it. Make sure your power supply plug is fully plugged in. Also make sure the switch is uh, on. So it should be on the I or one, because it's a one and a zero, as my wife has to constantly remind me, because I go as O for on, and she's like, it's not no, it's a zero. I'm dumb. But anyway, uh, make sure the power plug is plugged in, the switch is turned on, that's your first thing. After that, make sure your keyboard and mouse are plugged in, keyboard at the minimum. You can usually get away without having the mouse plugged in, but you'll definitely want a keyboard. Otherwise, if you do get to the screen or a post anyway, you might have an error on your monitor that says no keyboard plugged in. Make sure your display port, if you're using display port or HDMI cable, is fully seated. This display port cable does not have a lock, so it is possible that it can go in kind of like halfway. One other thing when it comes to your uh, display cable, if you're not getting a picture, before you even go in and muck with the internal cables, try different display port outs, try an HDMI cable, and if you, or even DVI or VGA if you're still, if it's an older GPU. It could be that you just have a dead port. So always try the other ones as well. That might solve the issue. Having a dead port's not as nearly as big of an issue as an entirely dead GPU. Well, yes, it sucks and yes, it's an inconvenience. I'd wager you probably might not go with the downtime of RMAing it versus a whole dead GPU. Now that we've checked all the external connectors, we wanna go inward. And the first thing and easiest things that you'll be able to check are your GPU power uh, connections your CPU, and you might have an eight pin and a four pin or two eight pins. So again, make sure they are fully seated. And then of course your motherboard 24 pin cable, make sure that's fully seated as well. On most GPUs, if your, let's say the cable itself is an issue and not delivering power, or if it's not fully seated, there might be like a red light right here saying, hey, I'm not getting enough power. So that's a good indicator. So then you can unplug it, replug it back in, see if that works. Or again, you might just have a bad cable. If you have a fully modular power supply, go get a different VGA cable, plug it in and try that. Or if you have um, just extra PCI cables from a non-modular power supply, same thing, plug that one in instead. You might just have a bad cable. If it's your 24 pin or your CP pa CPU power, you might be a little bit more out of luck um, as that might not work for you. If you are using cable extensions and you're still not getting a post, remove the cable extensions, try plugging them and then do one at a time because it's an eliminate, it's all about eliminating, right? So do one at a time and then plug from the actual power supply cable directly into the component. It might be that you just have a bad cable extension as well. After you've eliminated all the power cables as a culprit, go for your CPU fan header cable, make sure that's plugged in. Uh, normally, if it isn't, you'll just get a CPU air fan not detected type issue. It essentially just means that there's no fan head, uh, fan plug plugged into the CPU fan header. And you'll get this if you are doing a full custom water loop and you can, so there it's really not a uh, issue. It shouldn't be an issue, but you'll get that every single time you boot up the machine. So you'll wanna go into the BIOS and disable that warning. And that's what it is considered, it's a warning. So if you get that, then that's clearly your CPU fan header is either, a plug is in the wrong header or it's just not plugged in at all. After that, check your RGB headers, 
that those plugs are connected right, your USB 2 and 3 and USB-C connections are plugged in fully. Essentially, a computer just doesn't like it if something's not fully plugged in. If it's half plugged in, it will have a conniption fit. One set of connectors you'll definitely want to pay attention to are your case connectors. Consult your manual for both your case and your motherboard to make sure these connectors are properly plugged in. If you accidentally put a connector into the wrong pin or if you plug it in backwards, you might not even be able to get the system to turn on, let alone you might just end up having like random reboots or other bad things that could happen. I know they're a giant pain in the butt, but you really got to make sure these get plugged in correctly to avoid any issues. Make sure you have your SATA data and SATA power cables, if you're using an SSD or an HDD, fully plugged in as well. They are very delicate connectors on the hard drives, the SSDs themselves, so make sure you're very careful when you plug them in. And additionally, if you're using a motherboard like this one and you have a bottom M.2 slot installed, that means, for this motherboard at least, the SATA 5 and 6 data connections, which are you can't really see them under the GPU, but they're right here, uh, are disabled. So make sure your SATA uh, data cable is not plugged into a disabled connector. That will provide that will, that'll prove to be an issue in the long run because if that's gonna be your OS drive, it won't be recognized. If that's your data drive, it won't be recognized, etc. And it could cause an issue in boot. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it will definitely mean you won't be able to see it. So make sure your SATA data cable is in a SATA port that is active. Next up is getting to see if it's a hardware issue, if it's not a cable issue. And the first two things that you can check, which are the easiest, are your GPU and your RAM. The third being any M.2 slots that you have installed. Unfortunately, getting to those means you're gonna to have to uninstall a GPU. And if you have a liquid cooled system, that's gonna to prove to be an extreme headache unless you have quick disconnects. So the first thing you can do is reseat your RAM sticks fully, meaning go ahead and take them out. I'm just gonna take this last one out. So pop it out fully and then reinstall till you hear that nice crunch. There you go. The other thing you can do is just kind of give it a good push if it's not fully seated, it should go right in. If that still doesn't work, then what my next advice would be is to take out, if you're working with two sticks or four sticks, take all but one stick out. Leave the one stick in the slot that is single channel. Usually it's the second slot away from the CPU cooler. Um, check your manual to be sure, and then install it. If it works, great, both the RAM and that slot work. Next up, swap this RAM out for the other RAM stick. See if this RAM stick works. If it does, great. Next up, what you can do is take the original RAM stick and try each slot, okay? Um, and see if it works. Sometimes, some motherboards don't like it if an improper slot is populated alone, so it might not boot anyway. So what you can do then is retry your two sticks uh, solution in dual channel mode and see if it works. If it does, great. It, again, it was just an issue of the RAM not being seated. If you have four sticks, go through each individual stick in the slot that works to prove that each RAM stick works. If it does, fantastic. If not, that means you might have a bad RAM slot on your motherboard. Um, again, try both RAM. So if you have four sticks, try the single slot first. One, two, three, four. Then do dual channel mode on each stick. Do one stick that works, then populate that second slot with two, three, and four. And if that works, then again, you're, you're proving none of your RAM sticks are broken. And again, it might come down to a slot. So then what you can do is you could in theory, but again, some motherboards might not like it and it might not work anyway. Try it with uh, channel the two slots over one and three instead of two and four um, and see if that works. And again, it just all this is doing is proving that a slot is not broken on your motherboard. Next up is our GPU. Same thing again, just give it a push. Might not be fully seated. If not, take it out fully, reinstall it, see if that works. Um, if that still doesn't work, you could have a dead PCIe slot. So what you can do then is maybe move it to another full size slot if your motherboard has it available. Uh, again, some of the boards are very finicky and don't even like that being used as a display card slot anymore. So it might not work. And honestly, those other slots that are full are usually by four or uh, eight in speed, which means you're not getting full bandwidth. So you don't want that anyway. So what that still ends up meaning is that you have a bad motherboard versus a GPU. If none of those fixes work and you're still not getting a uh, post, then what you can do is if you have an Intel, an AM5, or an AM4 APU, um, then you can use the motherboard out, display out, 
to try and get a picture. And again, that will just mean you more than likely have, unfortunately, a dead GPU. After that, we have the fun and not easy task of reseeding our M.2 slots. So go ahead and unscrew the cover. If there's a heatsink cover, just reseed it fully, take it out, slot it back in, and there you go. That's all you can really do. I would probably recommend just doing, if you're running two slots or more, uh, two M.2 cards or more, uh, just do one at a time until you get a, see if you get a post because it could be just one bad drive is making the whole thing not work. The last bit and even more annoying than the M.2 drives is checking out your CPU. You're gonna see if it's been seated properly. You're gonna see if there are any bent pins either on the CPU if you're AM4 or earlier, AM3, or if there's any bent pins on the motherboard itself for Intel and AM5. Unfortunately, straightening pins on the motherboard can be very risky. You can end up making it worse than better. Uh, it's a little easier with the AM4 C type CPU where the pins are on the CPU itself, but again, still has its risks. Uh, honestly, if you have a bent pin on a motherboard and you're a novice at this, um, or if you just assume that it's a bent pin because everything else has worked, has worked before, RMA the motherboard. Don't try and take it upon yourself to straighten the pins unless you consider yourself very much uh, able to, you know, you have the knowledge and the know-how. I wouldn't do it because those pins, pins are so delicate, I would rather just RMA it. First thing you're gonna do, remove the CPU cooler and check it. Did you add thermal paste? Did you? Secondly, did you remove the plastic film off the bottom of the CPU cooler? If you didn't, there could be an issue. <laughs> it might work, but your CPU will have ir irregularly high temperatures and it's gonna suck while playing any kind of game or doing any kind of productive work. Um, and eventually it will just, you know, the temperatures will go higher and higher and higher. So remove your CPU cooler, check to see if the plastic film's on there. So make sure you have thermal paste applied. If that's not it, then remove the CPU, check to see if there are any bent pins, check to see if it was seated fully, and then you can go ahead and reseat it and try turning on the system. What you can do is just to put the CPU cooler on, kind of put some pressure on it, turn on the system super fast, see if it has any post. If it does, turn it off, reapply um, new thermal paste, gotta clean your CPU of course, and then reapply the thermal paste. Screw it all back in, turn it on, and if it works, yay. If not, boo. After checking all the hardware, the next thing you can do is clear your CMOS. If your motherboard doesn't have a clear CMOS button, you can go ahead and get a screwdriver and just for instance here, this is where it is, it's two prongs, is bridge that with the screwdriver. So this is my screwdriver and I'm just gonna go boop and hold it for 10 seconds and it should clear out. Again, uh, power doesn't have to be on or anything. Uh, it basically just kind of drains whatever information is in there. Secondly, the clear CMOS battery, you can pop it out and then leave it for maybe, I've heard anywhere from 10 seconds to 10 minutes, so I don't know. If you're using an older motherboard, like, oh, I have a really old system, I wanna try and do a retro build or something, odds are your clear CMOS battery could be dead, so you're gonna have to replace that. And that's all the hardware troubleshooting tips that I could think of. Hopefully they help you discover any of the issues that might be going on with your PC build. If you can think of any additional hardware troubleshoot tips, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, consider doing so. And if you are, thank you for your support. Consider watching some of the other videos I've made. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to turn on notifications. I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.